Redemption Square Church, are y'all ready to worship this morning with us? Would you just lift your hands? Father, in the name of Jesus, we welcome you. We welcome you, Lord God, not just in this building, but into our hearts. We thank you, Father, that you are for us and not against us. We celebrate your goodness and your mercy in Jesus' mighty name. And all of God's people said, why don't you greet two or three people around you and say, God is mighty and mighty to be praised. Here we go. Elder Vicar. Amen. Hallelujah.
grateful for Jesus, somebody shout hallelujah. We bless you, Father. We glorify you, Jesus. We thank you, Father, for the promise of your presence in our worship and in our praise. We lift our hands, God, to glorify your name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Come on, church, let's just lift our hands up together. There's joy in the house of the Lord, amen? the God who is. We worship the God who evermore will be. He opened the prison doors. He parted the raging sea. My God, He holds the victory. closed and there was no open window and we cried out to God and we begged God, Father, turn this around. 
I didn't remember any sermons. All I could say to my mother who wasn't born again at the time was just tears, just cry. And she was telling me, mijo, no llores, no te preocupes, don't worry, don't cry, God has it. Amen. This song's called Turn It Around. There might be somebody who needs something turned around this morning. If that's you, just wave your hand at me. You need God to turn something around. We're going to sing this song over you. And we're going to sing this with you. Amen. God, turn it around. I'm calling on the name that changes everything. God, turn it around. God, turn it around. God, turn it around. All of my hope is in the name, the name of Jesus. Breakthrough in the name, the name of Jesus. Oh, I pray God come turn this thing around. God, turn it around. God, turn it around. God, turn it around.
all of my hope. Come on. All of my hope is in the name, the name of Jesus. Breakthrough will come, come in the name, the name of Jesus. All of
now Jesus from the mountains, Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy, Jesus for my family, I speak the whole
church just remain standing as we get ready to pray together brother ricardo was just sharing a moment ago about seasons and i don't know god's been speaking to me about seasons i don't know what kind of season that you've been going through maybe a dry dark season maybe the shifting seasons of of, of what's happening right now it just shook you up messed you up took you off your firm foundation just want to remind you as we get ready to pray that our lord is the Lord of seasons and he leads us into seasons and every season a lot of seasons are about sowing and reaping I know many people here you've been sowing with tears and you've been sowing with prayer and you've been sowing hope and you've been waiting on the Lord but it's gotten hard and you've forgotten that those who sow with tears will reap with rejoicing but others, but others, others of us, we've not really taken advantage of sowing opportunities in the seasons that we've been going through. We've been sowing a wind and we've been reaping the whirlwind. And God knows what we've been through. God knows the seasons that we're in. And I just want to read to you a quick verse out of the book of Hebrews in the New Testament. You have to remember whatever season that you're in, that the Lord Jesus has come to be our high priest to mediate on our behalf, to help us, to save us, to be our bridge to our God. Whatever season that you're in, you have to know somebody is looking out for you. Somebody is interceding on your behalf. And I want to read this as we get ready to pray. Therefore, consequently, since Jesus is our high priest to our God, he is able to save to the uttermost those who draw near to God through him since he always lives to make intercession for them whatever season whatever season let's get ready to pray whatever season that you're in turn your eyes to your high priest Jesus your Savior Jesus to your intercessor Jesus who will succeed in your life with whatever he begins let's pray father right now Jesus 
Lord, in this moment of sweet, sweet, sweet presence of Jesus, of promise, of hope, Lord God, that we open our hearts, Lord, no matter what kind of season that we've been through, Jesus. Lord, some of our hearts are so callous and dry and hardened because we've been hurting alone, Lord. Lord, in isolation from individuals, but in isolation from you, Lord. God, we've lost hope. We've lost trust. We've given up, Lord, pursuing and drawing near because we've been convinced of a lie, Lord. That we have to earn something. We have to prove something. But yet you have come to save us. You've come to deliver us, Lord. You've come to rescue us. You've come to redeem us. You've come to intercede on our behalf. And so right now, Lord Jesus, God, whatever season that we find ourselves in, Lord, God, we surrender in this place. Lord, we wait upon the Lord in this place. God, we wait with confidence. Lord, we don't need to see you to know that you're there. God, we don't have to feel anything to know, Lord, that you love us, Lord. We don't have to look and turn to anything to know, God, that you are working things out for our good because you promised, Lord. God, so right now, Jesus, Lord, we cry out for our brothers and sisters. Lord, maybe it's people that we know that are not here, that are not watching. Lord, because they've walked away from you, Lord. Right now, God, we pray, Lord, in this moment of surrender, of faith, of trust, of total dependence upon you, Jesus. God, would you come to unlock the seasons, Lord. Unlock the seasons, Lord. God, unlock the seasons of bitterness, Lord of sin, Lord Jesus, of blindness, Lord, of a hardened heart, Lord. God, for wayward husbands and wives, Lord, uncles and aunties and grandmas, Lord, and sons and daughters and grandchildren, Lord, and co-workers, God. Lord, we cry out for your church, Jesus. Lord, your ones, your little ones, oh God, Lord, that have strayed away from you, Jesus. Lord, your promise, your promise, God, as you will cause our enemies to bring our little ones back. Lord, you will cause the east and the west, Lord, to bring, Lord, those that have been lost and imprisoned, separated from you, Jesus. Separated from your kindness and your warmth, Lord, and your promise and your hope, Lord. Your presence. You've promised that you'll bring them back. Lord, and we trust you. Lord, and for everybody that's lost right in the house, Lord, you'll bring us back, Lord, because you ever live to intercede for us. And you're able to finish what you begin. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. You may be seated. Thank you, Jesus. All right. We just have a few announcements for you. We want to welcome all of you here on 51st and Broadway. All of you that are with us online, we want to welcome especially those of you that are with us for the very first time. And for all of you that are online with us, we, like like every Sunday, we would love to know where you're joining us from. So if you would just please in the, in the chat box, just enter what country, what state, what part of the country that you're from, what part of the region of the world that you're joining us from. That would be awesome. We'd love to feature it in a little bit. And also for anybody that's here in the building, would you please check your phones just to make sure that we are not interrupted during the preaching of God's Word in a little bit. Also, if you have a little one here with you, if your baby begins to cry, uh, we do have our gold jacketed ushers in the back. They will direct you on the second floor in room 205 and 206. We have a space for you to be able to stay with your child and also continue to watch the service. Also, anyone here with the little one from six weeks old all the way through fifth grade, we have a service going on simultaneously on the third floor. We have an amazing TSC Kids facility and team. You're able to just bring them there quickly now before the service, uh, the, the sermon begins. Also, junior high students, sixth through eighth, is happening on the second floor. If you have young adults and high school students in your life, Friday night right here at 7 p.m., that's where we meet also. And um, we just have another few announcements left for you. And also don't forget to, um, no, I called that. Silence the phones. We got you. Sorry, my my announcements are here on the screen. Don't forget that um, we have something really special happening in a couple weeks. On Thursday, September the 21st, 
we are launching our foundations class. If you've been looking for an opportunity to go to, to get a, a firm foundation for your faith, to meet others from the church, on the third floor of our annex at 7 p.m. on Thursday, September the 21st, uh, we invite you to, to join us. But you do have to register. Uh, we, we have limited space, a lot of uh, interest. And so please register at tsc.nyc forward slash events. Also, next Sunday on the 17th, we do have baby dedications right here. There's still space, still, still room. You can, you can get your baby dedicated in person or on Zoom, online. You can find out all the information on our website. Again, tsc.nyc forward slash events. And finally, today, after the 1 p.m. service around 3 o'clock, we have a volunteer fair that's happening on the second floor, room 201. And that's for all of you to be able to find out what opportunities we have for you to get plugged in, make community, and just move forward in your life with Jesus and step out in faith and just be obedient to what God wants you to do. So today, after the, the second service, around 3 o'clock, we thank you so much for your generosity. We'd love for you to turn your attention to the screen and see what God has been doing through your faithful tithes and giving and the nation of Indonesia. God bless you. Our partners in Yogyakarta, Indonesia, share the gospel and food with children in eight different districts in the city, focusing on where the need is greatest. Your generosity helps support the programs in the city that are serving children through learning centers, after-school programs, and sports camps. Snacks and hot meals get served in these programs daily, and the impact that a meal and the gospel has had on the children has led the parents and community to see how much God cares about the needs of the people in Indonesia as He brings funds from a church in New York City. The parents have expressed how they witnessed their children going healthier and being more enthusiastic about learning. Thank you so much, Times Square Church, for your support that is helping people in Indonesia. Here are some of them thanking you for the blessing you have brought to the children in Yogyakarta. Halo, terima kasih untuk sponsor feeding dengan adanya makanan ini, anak-anak tambah sehat dan semangat. Terima kasih. Terima kasih untuk Bapak dan Ibu dan Gereja Tan Square yang sudah membantu melalui kegiatan feeding yang diberikan. Tuhan Yesus memberkati. We love sharing these stories with you as a reminder of how God is using your giving to help others all around the world. Thank you for being such a generous church. What an honor and privilege it is to partner with each of you to help spread the message of Jesus. If you're prepared to give today, I want to remind you that there are five ways you can give here at TSC. You can text Give TSC NYC to 77977. You can download the PushPay app and give that way. You can give online at tsc.nyc forward slash give. And the easiest way to give is by setting up a recurring gift on our website like we're showing you right now. We've made it simple to give automatically from your credit card, debit card, or checking account. Life gets busy. And this is a great way to put God first in your finances. It takes less than two minutes to set up a recurring gift and we've made it simple and convenient for you to give online through our secure platform. Or. You can always mail your check or money order to our office. And if you're with us in person today, you can give by putting your tithes and offerings in the basket that our ushers will be passing out in a few moments. Thanks again for being such a generous church.
Hallelujah. 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 Come on, let's stand to our feet and just praise Him just for a moment. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just because you are God, we bless your name, oh God. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Wow. Sense his presence here today. I hope you sense it wherever you're watching from around the country and around the world. We believe that God just transcends this place and goes beyond. He's not limited to a, a, a building on on 51st of March. You know what David says? David says this. He says, the world can't, the universe can't even contain him. And so we, you think to yourself, you go, and any, no, none of us have, have a copyright on God. He can do whatever he wants to do, and anywhere he wants to go, God can go. You know what I love about God? There is no closed countries. There is no closed countries. And that's why we welcome all those that are watching right now with us. The body of Christ all over the world is with us right now. For those that are in person, I want you just to know who your brothers and sisters are around the world. You're going to have to give me just a few minutes here. We want to welcome from around the world uh, that's watching with us. Belgium and Germany, Ireland, the Netherlands, Macedonia, Georgia, Norway, the UK is with us, Poland. Finland, Sweden, Italy, Greece, Russia. We believe for an end of this war in Jesus' name. Um, New Zealand and Ukraine. We're standing with Ukraine, believing for God just to shut this, that all of this down. Uh, Kenya, Burundi, South Africa, Mauritius, Madagascar, South Sudan, Pakistan, Australia, Fiji, Singapore, South Korea, we welcome you. India, we welcome you. United Arab Emirates, Indonesia, Thailand, the Philippines, Ecuador, Morocco, Dominican Republic, Trinidad, Hungary, Chile, Barbados, Peru, Uruguay, Venezuela, Colombia, Brazil, Jamaica, Haiti, Costa Rica, Canada, and Puerto Rico, we welcome you all in Jesus' name. We're so thankful that you're with us today. Now, just before we pray, our series is called The Bible Says. As we're approaching the final few weeks of this, it's a biblical worldview from A to Z. Every one of those letters begins to take a huge topic. And as we've told you, it's a journey with the most important biblical definitions that we have to become acquainted with again from the Bible perspective. It's redefining Bible definitions that has been made blurry by both culture and by religion. I'm so thankful today. I, I wasn't planning on doing this, and then it just hit me. Um, I tell you, every week we finish the message, and then we send it over to California. And I, I just I need to give a shout out because th this family has been amazing. I, I know they're going to be upset with me, but I'll say it anyway. The Leslie Laws here, who is editing the entire book from California and working with this, please. Please be praying for Leslie and Hampton. There are three boys, uh, Noah, Caleb, and Hunter. They're all with us today in from California and thanking God um, as we're approaching just the end of this project that we're believing God is going to do something special. Now, let me just talk to you for a second before we pray. The last three letters, U, V, and W, have been very interesting to me. To preach on you, the unseen hand of God, the providence of God, and Esther, I was most excited about all the letters. U was my favorite. V on volunteers and serving I knew was so important for this church and that's why this volunteers fair at 3 p.m. I really want you to be there for that because that gets you off the bench and into the game. It gets you part of, of visiting with ministries at 3 p.m. today. W on worship I knew we would get excited over that. Worship is such an important part. But X is the letter I didn't want to preach, not because I can't figure out anything. I had people going and speaking on xylophones, on x-ray machines, or what are you going to speak on? And if I could have avoided it, I would have. If I could have pushed it back and gotten my X and moved it to Z, I would have done that. But this is what I do know. A.W. Tozer said it like this. He says, to be effective, the preacher's message must be alive. It must be an alarm. 
it must arouse and challenge. It must be God's present voice to a particular people. And I knew that there was going to be an alarm today. This is going to be my most controversial sermon I've, I've, I've preached in this series. I want to talk to you about when truth is called insanity. When truth is called insanity. This is the letter X. I'll explain X shortly. But I have to say this to you. I don't want to preach to the choir. I'm not going to preach for applause today. I want to preach for heaven's approval. I want to let the Bible dislodge mindsets, thoughts, and strongholds that have cemented into the minds and soul of America, the world, and even the church today. Let me say that one more time. I want to believe that truth is going to dislodge and destroy thoughts and strongholds that have cemented into the minds and soul of America, the world, and even the church today. I am, I am convinced that after today, some of you are going, we don't go to that church anymore. I'm just telling you. you, you some of you are going, well, that was, it was a good run. But I want to believe for the Holy Spirit now to come and do something very special. I want to believe for the Holy Spirit. I, I'm going to pray the scriptures, and as I pray them, I, I ask the production team to put them on the screen so you're going to see what I'm going to pray. I want you to pray with me around the world, around the country. Pray with me as we believe for God to come. God, as I stand here in desperate need of you, I say what Moses said 3,500 years ago as he was embarking on a journey he didn't, of the unknown when he said, unless you go with me, I'm not going. So I'm declaring today, come, come Holy Spirit, I need you. I need you, I need you Holy Spirit. I need you like never before, I need you. And Holy Spirit, I will stand on your word and I will echo the words of David the Psalmist in Psalm 44, who said, I put no trust in my bow, my sword does not bring victory, but give us victory over our enemies. You put our adversaries to shame and in God, we make our boast all day long and we will praise your name forever. God, I declare today, I don't have a sword that can bring victory, but your sword, O oh Lord, is victorious. For the word of God is alive and powerful. It's sharper than any two-edged sword, cutting soul and spirit between joint and marrow, exposing our innermost thoughts and desires. So today, Lord, I join even with the Apostle Paul and declare to this church and the church around the world what the Apostle said to the Ephesian elders that we have not shrunk or shied away from declaring to you God's whole truth. We will stand here and declare the whole truth. And God, I thank you that the truth will set us free. Sometimes it makes us miserable at first but it does set free. And we choose truth over comfortability. We choose truth over popularity. We choose truth over convenience. We choose truth over those that will follow us on social media. We choose truth because we know we choose freedom today. So set people free in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen and amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Thank you, worship team. Thank you so much, choir. C.S. Lewis said these powerful words that I want to build on. He said this. He said, when the whole world is running toward a cliff, he who is running the opposite direction appears that he's lost his mind. Look at that again. Keep that on the screen for just a moment. When the whole world is running toward a cliff and there's a person running the opposite direction, it appears that the one guy running the opposite direction has lost his mind. So I'm about to run the opposite direction today, opposite than the masses, opposite than even the church in general. And I will appear to some that I've lost my mind, but I'm in good company today. Jeremiah told the truth, and the religious, the false prophets, thought he lost his mind and called him crazy. Listen to it in Jeremiah 29, 26. 
when the false prophet said to the king, you're responsible to put in stocks and neck irons any crazy man who claims to be a prophet, and they locked up Jer Jeremiah. Jesus was the truth, and his family wanted to take charge of him and put him in custody. Mark 3.21 says, when his family heard about this, about his healings, they went to take charge of him, for they said he is out of his mind. This is Jesus and Jeremiah. Let's add one more. The Apostle Paul preached the truth, and the government said he was insane. Listen to Acts 26, 24. At this point, Festus, who was the governor, interrupted Paul's defense, and he said, Paul, you're out of your mind. Your great learning is driving you insane. I want you to listen to Paul. what Festus says, you're out of your mind, and it sounds like insanity, but this is Paul's response. Paul says in the next verse, I am not insane, most excellent Festus. Paul replied, what I'm saying is true and reasonable. It's amazing to me that you can preach truth and it be reasonable and people declare it insanity. Listen to it. The governor says what you preach is insane. The apostle Paul says what I'm preaching is true and it's reasonable. That the governor and the authorities were calling Paul's truth and Paul's preaching insane. Why? Jeremiah, Jesus, and the Apostle Paul were running the opposite direction than the cliff. They were moving away while people were perishing. Even Paul later on says in 2 Corinthians 5.13, he says, if we are out of our mind, as some say, it's for God. And so I want you to understand how important this is today. Have you ever heard of the phrase, the elephant in the room? It's the glaring, obvious issue that exists, but no one is talking about or dealing with it. Nothing is more demoralizing to a marriage, to a family, a ministry, a staff, than to have a herd of elephants running around and no one is addressing the issue. Keep in mind, God didn't make elephants to live in our room. He made them for the wild. And when you bring the wild into your family, your staff, and in your marriage, you're inviting chaos in. And be, when you don't address elephants in the room, the large issue, the nice talk with elephants that are present is just a smoke screen. And that's why it's going to have to take courage to say what really needs to be said instead of dancing around and, and assuming no one sees it. It was Martin Luther who said, a preacher must be both a soldier and a shepherd. He must nourish, defend, and he must preach and when he preaches, he must have teeth in his mouth and be able to bite and to fight. So get ready. I'm about to bite and to fight today is what I'm going to tell you. So I want to start with a big question. It's a big challenge that I always ask people, and it's this. When I'm dealing with people that have a, a, different, biblic, a, a, have a different worldview, and even at times in the church I've dealt with this, I said, what do you do when God contradicts your lifestyle? What do you do when the Bible contradicts your life? And then I'll ask him this question. Who wins that fight and tell me how you win it? Because here's what I usually start with. I said this. Number one, do you believe in God? If the answer is yes, then I said, then do you believe in God's word? And if the answer is still yes, then I always ask them, what if the Bible says something that contradicts your lifestyle? Whose opinion wins at that point? Is it God who wins, or do you just bypass those scriptures? It's what the great American author Mark Twain said when he said, most people are bothered by the passages of scripture they don't understand. I'm bothered by the ones I do understand. He says, those are the ones that scare me. When you don't obey what God is saying, then you're saying you know better than God. So do you know better than God on finances and tithing? Do you know better than God on love and sex outside of marriage? Do you know better than God on drinking and alcohol? Do you know better than God on sexual identity? 1931, there was an essay written by a minister named Fulton Sheen. Listen to these words. This is what he said. Tolerance applies only to people, but never to truth. Listen to that again. Tolerance applies to people, but never to truth. About truth, we are intolerant. Right is right if nobody is right. 
and wrong is wrong if everybody is wrong. And he says, and in this day and age, we need not a church that is right when the world is right, but a church that is right when the world is wrong. That's the place that you can find at least a church or a group running from the cliff instead of, instead of being there preaching on things that really make no sense while people are going off of a cliff. We're preaching on all these inconsequential things while men and women are perishing in sin. There is an elephant in the room where tolerance and intolerance have been misunderstood. Liberal pulpits in New York City and around the world will affirm and the pulpits that should be speaking have lost their voice and have gone silent. For some reason, I don't know what it is, but, uh, but I, I have a sense that I'll explain to you. It seemed that during COVID, when all of a sudden the world shut down and we opened up, the world changed. Something crept into the American mindset and into the nations around the world. And not only did anxiety and depression overwhelm the hearts and the minds of people that were locked in seclusion and locked in, in, in their homes and in their apartments, but something went off even with sexuality. Somehow when America was left to their own thoughts and no church and Christian values, we ended up in a dangerous place. We've allowed, bi we wake up and biological men are playing women's sports in college. We've told our children to decide what gender you are by checking a box. And we've sat by idly as both our president and a parade declared openly that your children belong to us. Folks, somebody has to say something. Those are fighting words. Those are fighting words. I'm preaching for your children and your grandchildren today. That's who I'm preaching for. So understand something. I'm not afraid of this anymore. If this is it, then let it be it. But I will stand before God and we shall proclaim the truth of Jesus Christ. The pulpits are preaching on leadership and how to get ahead. We need truth again while the world is going over an edge. I want to speak to the elephant in the room. Today I want to deal with gender identity in the LGBTQ community. I'm going to be the crazy preacher that is running away from the cliff while society is running towards it. I want to deal with legislation that our court has upheld. I want to deal with churches and pastors, listen to me, that have used their pulpits across the city and around America to uphold fallacies and sinful stands Pastors that no longer preach the Bible but pander to popular opinion and then chastise those who will stand for the truth of the word. Now listen, listen, here's the part I want you to hear. I'm not angry, I feel an urgency. I'm not angry, I feel an urgency. I'm not speaking to condemn, I'm speaking for revelation today. And today, based on that, what Tozer said, I'm a soldier today, for truth, but a shepherd for the hurting and the lost. Soldier for truth, but shepherd for the lost. So if you hear a shout, it's not for people, it's against lies that are having people run in a wrong direction. Billy Graham said one time, he said, if you are never preaching until the audience hears another voice. Everyone listening around the world and I'm right here in New York City, I pray today that you're, as I speak, you're gonna hear another voice. Not just my voice, but the voice of the, so before, even if you're trying to get up and leave this place, I pray that there is a voice, even those that are trying, I pray there's a voice that says, don't go, finish it, finish it. Listen to the crazy man for just a little bit longer and let the Holy Spirit minister. Okay, listen, I know God spoke this to me. You can only fight woke America with an awakened church. You can only fight a woke America with an awakened church. Listen to what Paul said. All things become visible when they're exposed by light. For everything that becomes visible is light. For this reason, he says to the people of God, awake sleeper, arise from the dead 
and Christ will shine on you. Folks, the problem with America is not America. The problem with America becomes a sleeping church. The only way the church will be effective is if it's awake. The only way it can be awake if it has a revival. And we have allowed in our, in our, in our dormant state let me just speak to the church itself. We have allowed others to tell us how to live and what to accept. When we as the church have to be those that bring people back to the source of life. Listen to Ephesians 2. To listen to this. How what he says. Ephesians 2 says, you let the world, which doesn't know the first thing about living, tell you how to live. Listen to judges and courts and legislation God knows how life works. When God defines something, we go with his definition. Truth doesn't come from politics, a court, or a majority. Let me say that again. Truth, truth is not made up by politicians, judges, a court. It comes from God who is omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent. R.C. Sproul said it like this, when God says something, the argument's over. It's just over. It's over. There's nothing else to say. It's done. If God says it, it's over. He's omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscient. He knows what he's doing. I was just got an email sent to me from a president of an incredible Christian university that says what they're facing right now is with AI. He says there is a brand new app, which is an AI Bible app, which panders to certain lifestyles and communities and literally in this AI, it is a AI commentary on the Bible. And what has been put in it is they, they make up things that Jesus never said. So now they're saying what Jesus says. I was reading the thing and it says that Jesus looked upon, speaking about the, a woman caught in adultery, he says, Jesus looked upon her with kindness saying, my child, blessed are you who strive for unity within themselves for you will know the deepest truth. And in the kingdom, there is no men or woman anymore. That's, that's, the AI, that's the new AI Bible commentary. Folks, let me tell you something. I don't need AI to define what the scripture says. It speaks for itself very clearly. And we'll speak to that in a moment. You can't vote on policy, but you can vote, folks, you can vote on policy, but you can't vote on truth. The truth comes from God. So that's why I'm warning the body of Christ. I see this as a preparation time for the church and even a persecution that will come as a church takes its stand. I believe the church will be attacked. Those that stand for scripture will be attacked viciously and we will have to possibly, that's why we encourage you to get involved with connect groups because if anybody, here's the thing you have to understand. You can lock the doors of a church but you can't stop the body of Christ. You can stop a building. But I'm telling you, in these last days, the church is going to get stronger than it's ever been. It will be more distinct than it's ever been. It will be in the battle of its life, but it will see the God of glory show up like never before. Here is X when we call when truth is called insanity. I'm prepared to be told after today that I've lost my mind, like Acts 26, when the government leader called sober truth and the apostle Paul's preaching insane. It's amazing. Nobody reads anything that Festus says he was the insane one running to the cliff. We have to address this in a biblical worldview for our children, our grandchildren, and even for the future. I'm, I'm not trying to be novel and I'm not trying to be um, pithy, and I'm not trying to be unique, but I knew I needed to address this, and I probably pushed it further down the alphabet than I needed to. But I want to talk to you the letter X. I want to talk to you about the X chromosome and other fallacies that try to dictate my future and my destiny. And it's a fight for truth. Science is saying that our, and our governments and our courts are affirming that a lifestyle is acceptable because we were created with this. With the, they call it the XQ28 gnome that's in the X chromosome. They said people have to live a certain lifestyle because we were created that way. Okay, folks, now just listen for a moment. If that's true and God exists, 
then God can't judge and send anybody to hell because we've cre- he created people that way. And that means also the Bible is not true for the things it says and condemns and goes after. Because God is making you responsible for something that he commands you not to do, that he put inside of you. And the elephant in the room is you can't believe in God, honor his word, and believe that the sin is in our genes and therefore we cannot call it sin. So what Festus calls crazy, Paul calls sober truth. And that governor in power can legalize crazy. He can criminalize sober truth and legalize insanity. So we're living in a country that is, that when, we have to remember, when you redefine, you undermine what God is talking about. When you try to redefine sexuality and marriage, you're under, you're, 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 what you do is you undermine because God's being redefined. We're redefining everything today. Courts have legalized and preachers have edited and we're being asked to be silent and to stand down. And folks, I've, I'm, I'm done with that. I'm, 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 I'm finished with that. And here's, I have a word. Listen, I want to give a word from the scriptures to those that, are in, that, those that are in legislative authority. Those that are part, whether in politics or whether you sit on a court, whether you're a judge. I want you to listen to this. I want you to see what God says through the Psalms, to those that are judges. Psalm 82 says, God calls the judges, listen to this, God calls the judges into his courtroom. And he puts all the judges in the dock. That means that the dock is the witness stand. He says, enough, you've corrupted justice long enough. You've let the wicked get away with murder. You're here to defend the defenseless, to make sure that the underdogs get a fair break. Your job is to stand up for the powerless and prosecute those who exploit them. Ignorant judges, head in the sand judges, they haven't a clue of what's going on. No, everything's falling apart and the world is becoming unglued. Wow, this is good. Listen to this. I commissioned you judges, each one of you as deputies of the high God. But you betrayed your commission. You've stripped us of your rank and busted. And oh God, give them their just desserts. You've got the whole world in your hands, oh God. Keep this in mind. Just because something is legalized doesn't mean God approves. Let me say that again. Just because something is legalized doesn't mean God approves it. Listen to the Apostle Paul. He says, don't you know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor the effeminate, nor homosexuals, nor thieves, nor the covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. Such were some of you, but you've been washed. You've been sanctified. You were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, in the spirit of our God. And right after that, the apostle Paul says this, all things are lawful, but not all things are profitable. All things could be lawful, but I will not be mastered by any of those things. God says a law may legalize, but we live by a higher law when it comes to these things. We now have preachers editing the Bible. Jeremiah 36 is not only scary, it's contemporary. King Jehoiakim exists today in the form of politics, courts, and public opinion and in pulpits. He was the king during the Babylonian takeover in Israel. And the king didn't like Jeremiah's message. He was the one who called him insane, like Festus called Paul insane. So look what he did, Jeremiah 36, 23. When Jehuda had read, one of the prophets read of the three or four columns of of the scripture, the king cut it with the scribe's knife, threw it in the fire that was in the brazier, and until all the scroll, that's the scripture, was consumed in the fire. He didn't like it, so you cut it up and throw it away. You're still responsible, even though you threw, let me say it. One of our presidents, Thomas Jefferson, spent the latter years of his life constructing his own version of the New Testament. Jefferson actually took a razor in one hand and glue in the other and cut out parts of the Bible he didn't like. He cut all the miracles out, anything supernatural, 
any references to the flood or the second coming, cut out heaven and hell and the resurrection of Jesus, bound it in a beautiful red letter, and now the New Testament was 85 pages in Jefferson's Bible. Folks, it's not something that happened thousands of years ago. It happened in our own country. What did God ask Jeremiah to do after the authority of the land took his knife and cut out things and said, we don't want to see that? Look what it says, Jeremiah 36, 27. Then the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah after the king had burned the scroll and the words which Baruch had written at the dictation of Jeremiah. And God said to him, take again another scroll and write on it all the former words that were on the first scroll. Basically said, leave nothing out. Man can try to cut it out, but I'm going to always keep bringing the word of God back. You can, listen, listen, you can try to edit the Bible, you can cut out passages, but one thing is true. Jesus said it like this, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Psalm 119, 89 says, your word, O Lord, will last forever. It is eternal in the heavens. Here's the end of the story. Babylon did come. They didn't like to hear that. And instead of saying, you're right, Jeremiah, you know what they did to Jeremiah? Here it is, verse, 30, verse 15 of chapter 37. Then the officials were angry at Jeremiah and beat him and put him in jail. That's what they did. They didn't like what this man preached, so they threw him in jail. Here's what I want to talk to you about because I don't want to, this is not, this is not coming with bashing. This is coming with answers today. The battle today didn't start in a courtroom or in D.C. It didn't start on a university, a liberal university campus, and it didn't start in a lab at the World Health Organization. This battle that we're facing today started in the minds of people and then went into a lifestyle and then went into a law. The lifestyle didn't come from a chromosome. It came from a battle in the mind. The mind is Satan's battleground. And satanic questions is his strategy. Don't miss this. You've got to see this. It's the mind where it starts. This is what we have to deal with. It's not just about this issue. It's about everything that we face. That Folks, get this. The mind is Satan's battleground. And satanic questions is his, is his strategy. Do you know the three times Satan talks verbally in the Bible? All of his, all of his every time he speaks, it's always a question. That's exactly what the enemy does. He doesn't declare, but he imposes questions to individuals. He says, it'll come like this. God doesn't remember you. Is there really a God? Are you really a man? Are you really a woman? God will, the enemy will come in and question everything that God has declared. Satan will come in and question those things. Listen to it. Genesis 3.1, the first time Lucifer opened up his mouth as a serpent, more crafty, he said to the woman, indeed, has God said you shall not eat from any tree of... All of a sudden, planting questions. The next time the enemy opens up his mouth is in Job 1.9. Then, then Satan answered the Lord, does Job fear God for nothing? And then Lucifer opens up his mouth again in the New Testament to Jesus. And the tempter came and said, if you are the son of God, command these stones become bread. If you are the son of God, does Job fear for nothing? Has God really said these things? That's the strategy of the end. That's the mind battles that come from hell. They'll question everything about this book. They'll question everything that's even being said today. Folks, I... I told some of our elders, I told my wife, I said, I faced those satanic questions heavily these last few days that I looked for everything else not to preach today. Everything. And all I heard was these questions. Do you want to see people walk out on you? Do you want to lose money? Do you want to ruin the church? Do you want to, do you want to shrink the church? You're going to, it'll wreck everything up. And folks, let me just say this. We may lose people, we may lose money, but I want to be able to stand before God and say we have not compromised the scriptures of Jesus Christ. I'm completely, I am fully vested. If, if we come back Tuesday night and it's just me and just about a dozen of you, I'm good, I'm good. Because here's what I've learned. Here's what I've learned in 42 years of ministry. You, if everybody around New York City goes boo, but God goes yay, that's all that matters to me. That's all that matters. 
and everybody else out there can go, yay, he's not saying anything. And if God goes boo, that's the opinion that matters to me today. We are all in a mind battle right now. And what we've mistaken the church to be is, listen to me, the church is not a museum and a hall of fame. The church is a hospital with a lot of sick people getting better every single week. Some of you are going, we're sick, and you're looking at one of them. We're getting better every single week as God is beginning to do. Folks, let me tell you what I do. You don't even know this. While you're singing words on the screen, my mind gets attacked as I sit there. Don't ever sit in that section. <laughs> it's like this battle comes. It just hits. I have verses I put on my phone that I try to pray and recite these verses before I can even sing a song. These horrible thoughts just fill my mind, whether fear or, 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 or whatever it could be. As I'm sitting there, I, I just start quoting these verses. I, I start to quote Colossians 3, 2, set your mind on things above and not on things on the earth. I declare Proverbs 23, 7, which says, for as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So what am I going to think? Then I begin to quote Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. Brethren, whatever things are true and lovely and just and pure, whatever's a lovely, whatever's a good report, think on these things. And then the final verse that we're going to unpack for just a few moments here, I begin to declare 2 Corinthians chapter 10, 5, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. And then I can sing Jesus for my family. Jesus. Then it's at that point, I have to, because it's always a mind battle. Are you sure you want to preach? Are you sure you, are you, are you able to preach this? Are you really capable of doing this? Folks, th this is where the enemy begins to come in and start with those questions. Now, let me just say this. I want you to get this. Here it comes. When you become a Christian, you are not just adopted you are enlisted at the same time. This is where we have, we, have, we, we have not, starting with me, equipped you. Let me say that again. The moment you become born again, listen to me, to young people, listen to me, students on college campus, the moment you are adopted, that's being born again, you are also enlisted. You get adopted into God's family, but you get enlisted into God's army at the same time. At the, so it's, it's a matter of going, oh, hallelujah, born again. Here's a sword. This is, we, we, we keep it really kind of on this, on this the, the, we keep the, these, these new converts on the, on the ward of the, of the new believers and we forget we need to be equipping you immediately for the battle that's coming. And the battle, here it comes. And the battle will come here. You're not a Christian. You know what you've done in your past? You can't do that. And the battle starts here with the questions from the enemy. The church that is ignorant to warfare and its weapons is a weak and defeated church. War demands courage and persistence and discipline. Something that we need in our daily lives. You are adopted when you become born again. But you're enlisted because you're born again. When you enter into the armed services, when you, some of you have just served so valiantly in our, in our, in our um, army and navy, marines, our air force, our coast guard, you didn't go in and say, do you have anything that's Nike? Do you have anything with an Adidas? I like to wear Adidas. I'm, a, I'm an Under Armour man. So do you have Under Armour? You don't say that. You don't say when they're issuing you your boots, do you have the new Jordans? You don't say that. You don't go, I like pizza on Thursdays. And I'm not a morning person. I like to stay up at night. So I won't be there when you, do, when you call roll. I won't. You're in the war. You're in an army. Folks, many have accepted that they are Christians, but not have accepted that they are soldiers. And in order for us to have victory, we must understand the war that we're in, that Satan's major, major strategy is to get you to believe the lies that you're thinking. And I want to just teach you for these next few moments to tell you that the battle came to America in seclusion. That this, this pandemic, I believe, God was doing a lot of stuff during this, but so was the enemy. 
And the enemy was inflicting people with depression and anxiety. The suicide rate went up. But something else happened as America and the world began to believe the thoughts that were coming into their mind. As they stayed, stayed in seclusion. And today I want to teach you how to attack the meditation before it becomes a manifestation. How when that stuff starts to hit. David says this in Psalm 19. He goes, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable. And see, we, sometimes we only judge what comes out of our mouth and we don't bring judgment upon the thoughts that we're thinking and the rogue thoughts that seem to come. Don't miss the word, as I read this, don't miss the word think and knowledge of God coming up in Romans 1 because you're gonna see the battleground. In Romans chapter 1, listen to this because he's gonna speak to a sexuality issue, a sexuality identity, and he's going to show us that it started with losing a knowledge of God. And the, it started with the battle of the mind. Listen to this. In Romans chapter 1, verse 26, a scripture that so many avoid in the, in, 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 from the pulpits, but it's there. I can't, we can't. This is what it says. And in the same way, men have also abandoned their, the, um, Men have abandoned the natural relations with women and were inflamed with lust for one another. Men committed shameful acts with other men and received in themselves the due penalty of their error. And then he says this, furthermore, just as they did, it says, just as they did not think it worthwhile, it, this is an important word, to retain the knowledge of God, God gave them over to a depraved mind so, they, so, so that they do what ought not to be done. They have become filled with every kind of wickedness, evil, greed, depraved, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit. They're gossip, slanderers, God-haters, insolent, arrogant. They invent ways of doing evil. They disobey their parents. They have no understanding, no fidelity, no love. And he says, and there's no mercy. Although they know God's righteous decree, they do not do such things who deserve death. They not only continue to do those very things, but also approve of those who practice them. Verse 28 says that just as they did not think it worthwhile, go back to verse 28 for a moment. They said they did not think, mind, it worthwhile to retain the knowledge of God. This is so important because this is where the battle begins to come. Here, here's how... The, the, it fights. A.W. Tozer said these words. Listen to this. 10,000 thoughts a day pass through our minds and they try to predict what we will become. Let me say that again. 10,000 thoughts a day will pass through our minds and they try to predict what we will become. Every day. Those thoughts seem to come in and start to fight. This is the mind battle that comes. 10,000 rogue thoughts try to predict who you are and what you are. And I want to stop those predictions from coming true. That's why we have to fight. You're enlisted to it fight every single day and to bring the knowledge of God. F folks, so listen to me close. That's why don't believe everything you think. Don't believe that because you think it, it's true. Whew. I knew this was going to be tough, but you're making it a little bit tougher. It, this is important. Production, get, get production. You got to move with me on this. I, I just I don't. I don't want to fight this battle. Get that A. W. Tozer quote up there as fast as you can. This is important to me. Because I want to make sure that you're seeing this. Because those 10,000 thoughts that will pass through your mind, they'll try to predict what, what you will become. And that's why we can't believe everything that we think. It's in the mind that the new nature and the old nature are constantly at war. So we've got to see how do we, how do we get transformed. We win, according to the scriptures, with the renewal of the mind. That's Romans 12 too. We need the mind renewed. Renewal means renovation. People who have never renovated anything knows, who have re ever renovated anything knows this to be true. Renovation will cost you something. It'll take long. But that renovation helps us to fight a mindset that because once we're adopted, we're enlisted. 
And there's a fight that needs to come. So listen how we fight. Here it comes. 2 Corinthians 10.3. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God. Here it comes now. Here comes the mind battles. For the pulling down of strongholds, casting down arguments, and every high thing that will exalt, this is an important one, that exalts itself. Remember Romans 1.28? exalts it. They wouldn't retain the knowledge of God. So all of a sudden thoughts get higher. They come every thought, he says, that, against the, that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And we're called to bring every thought into what? To the obedience of Christ. He calls it pulling down strongholds and casting down arguments to describe the mind, the mind battle of the believer. Okay, here's the question. Do you know what a stronghold is? Here it is. The word actually means it's a fortress. It's a wall to try to keep things out. What, what a stronghold is, it's the picture of a wall, a fortress, to keep things out. So here's the question. What is the fortress or stronghold trying to keep out here it is god's truth that's what it's trying to keep out so the the enemy the messages of our culture are trying to build fortresses of belief that will begin to keep out those thoughts of god's truth Thoughts about God, thoughts about your sexuality, thoughts about marriage, thoughts about any topic. Society wants you to sort them out by your political affiliation, but not according to what the Bible says. They want you to sort it out by CNN and Fox News, and not by this book, which always tells the truth. So listen. So let me just speak to those who are leaving the church after today. Listen to me close. Wherever you land, you better find a place that you see the Bible open every single time because truth doesn't come from a political affiliation. So let me just help you. For all those that are wondering, you're in New York, you must be a Democrat. No! You're a Christian, you must be a Republican. No! My citizenship is in heaven and that's what we go. That's how we move as a church. Folks, here it is, listen. Our, go our government's already proven that they can't, that they, they have no more answers to anything. We've gotta go back to God who is the truth on these things. And we're all gonna face rogue thoughts. I faced them right there on row one. How do the, let, me, let me ask you this. Does anybody, any of the other rows get attacked with mind battles? I just want to make, okay. Oh, every row is, is, is in. So there is no safe rows in Times Square Church. I just want you to understand that. Look at the person next to you and say, we're enlisted. We're in a battle right here in our row. So how, here's the question. How do thoughts, because this goes, this is the bigger issue. This is the bigger topic. Remember, remember, what we're dealing with in America didn't come from courts, a liberal university. Don't, don't blame them. Didn't come from D.C., didn't come, didn't come from the World Health Organization. It didn't come from, a, from any of that place. The battle came from the mind. It's a mind battle. That's where it came from. So here's the question. How, how do thoughts become strongholds? How does this thought that says, if I don't like men as a man, then I must be a homosexual? Where do those thoughts come from? Now you have to understand, here's where the answer is. How do thoughts become strongholds? When the thought is raised higher than the knowledge of God. So here it comes. How does the thought, how does a rogue thought come and says, don't preach this message. Don't say what you're supposed to. I've got to find something that goes higher than that thought. That's what he says. He says, remember what he just told us. He said, here's what, here's what Paul says. He says, casting down imaginations and every 
high thing that does what? Exalts itself against, it goes higher. Exalt means it goes higher than the knowledge of God. So strongholds are thoughts that go higher than God's word. Oh, don't miss this. Strongholds are thoughts that go higher than God's word. That's why, get, get this, we have to renew our minds with the knowledge of God to fight strongholds. You cannot fight mind battles without this. Where do we get the knowledge of God? Here it comes. Simple. From where? The Word of God. The knowledge of God, of who God is. This is the place that we go to. We let God's Word give us who God is. The Word of God is the knowledge of God. And we have a responsibility to grow in the knowledge of God. How do you know that, Pastor Tim? Listen to 2 Timothy 3.18. This is just battle words. This is for the enlisted. The enlisted. If you're adopted, you're enlisted. Here it comes. Grow in the grace and what? Knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be the glory both now and to the day of folks. Leave that on the screen for just a second. Let me tell you why he put that in there. You know what 2 Peter chapter 3, 18? Peter writes that at the, one of the worst times the church was being persecuted. They were under the persecution of the government of Nero who called them all insane. They were not only insane, he was the one that was starting to put them burning Christians and lighting his gardens by taking Christians who would not renounce Christ he would light them up with, 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 with flammable liquid and he would light his gardens. Nero would do that. He was the one that would kill Christians, put them, put them in an arena. And the last verse of, of, of Peter's writings, as Peter is writing during this time, he says, I need you to grow in the grace and the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Because there's going to come rogue thoughts. Reject Christ. Don't do it. It's not worth it. They're going to kill you. Do you really want to die for your faith? What if they do this for your family? And all the satanic questions come. I need a thought that goes higher than those crazy thoughts that fill my mind. Folks, you can't, you, can't, you can't pull out a cell phone and go higher than a crazy thought. You can't find it online. The only way those thoughts go higher than every stronghold is this book has to go higher than every rogue and thought that seems to come. Here, here listen. Growing in the knowledge of God means I don't know enough about God and I need to grow every single day. Here's the catch. As I get older, the battles get bigger, and therefore God must become greater. <laughs> Knowing God is my weapon. And let me explain how it works. It's the knowledge of God and the Word of God. It's my knowledge. The knowledge of God is in the Word of God, and my knowledge of God has to grow because my battles are becoming greater. So there's two instruments. Here it is. Let me just give you a couple things here. Two instruments are involved in the renewal of your mind. Here it comes. When those crazy thoughts come and you're going, ah, something's not right. Here it is. The two things that work to fight these mind battles, they're going to come and try to confuse, is the Spirit of God and the Word of God. How does it work, Pastor Tim? The Spirit of God uses the Word of God to convict me when a thought contradicts God's truth. Listen to it again. The Spirit of God will use the Word of God to convict me when a thought contradicts God's truth. So when you take in the Word of God and you're faced with an outside mindset trying to conform you, it's like trying to bring liquids through a TSA checkpoint at LaGuardia that is over three and a half ounces. All of a sudden, that thing goes off. They say, oh, I didn't know I had a bottle of water in there. I didn't know I brought my shampoo and my carry-on. I didn't know I had conditioner. I didn't know I brought in my hair gel. Whatever that is, or my perfume, I thought it was, I thought it was good enough. They'll look at you and say, you got to get rid. That's not going on the plane. The alarm goes off and says, not able to get through this point. Folks, that's exactly what happens. The Holy Spirit all of a sudden sets off an alarm and says, that's not the right thought. That's not it. That's not it. That's, that's not correct. And all of a sudden, like a TSA checkpoint, 
all of a sudden says, that can't, you don't take that further on this journey. Shouldn't be there. That thought shouldn't go any further. And when the Holy Spirit says that, then all of a sudden you have a choice to either dispose of it or to try to smuggle it through on your journey. And I'm telling you, that's what's happened. Because there's nobody, I'm telling you, with lifestyles that contradict the word of God, there comes a moment first that the alarms went off and said, something's not right. And instead, you chose to go, it's legalized, everybody else is doing it. And what you've lost is that just because the people that should be voting on policy, not truth, not truth, all of a sudden said, it's good, it's acceptable. And God's going, no, 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 be careful. Don't bring it through this checkpoint because it's gonna bring something into your life that can become very dangerous. We attack those thoughts with how God thinks. When you fill your mind with God's words, then you have no more room for Satan's lies. So the test case is like this. Let's put the knowledge of God. Here it comes. Let's put the knowledge of God over a situation. Here it is. And all of a sudden, I'm faced with a questionnaire that asks me, what gender are you? It's a thought that's trying to raise up higher than God. The TSA checkpoint goes on and says, that's not your choice. Here it comes. I'm about to put the word. I am... I am who God created me to be. Here it comes. Matthew 19, 4, 5. Jesus says, have you not read that he created them from the beginning, male and female? Here it comes. I don't choose my gender. God already chose it. <laughs> I know. Listen, here it comes. You don't have to check a box. Heaven already did. And here's what God's. So I just took, when, when society says, you need to get, they're going to call this brainwashing. They're going to call this destructive. I'm saying, you're trying, to, you're trying to indoctrinate. You have a worldview. I'm trying to exalt, that's trying to exalt itself above the knowledge of God. God, here's the knowledge of God. God, from the very beginning, chose male and female. Check the box on who you are and says, you don't have to check any more boxes because you are called and are who God. God has made you to be. That's the good news. So there is no more confusion. God chose that. God was just going, you've got to let my word go higher than the thoughts that are coming in. So let me close with this as the musicians come because I'm already in a lot of trouble. So here it goes. Here we go. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Clarence, Clarence McCartney was a powerful preacher in the early 1900s. His books have greatly influenced me. He was a great Methodist preacher. His books called The Greatest Words in the Bible and Human Speech. It's one of my favorite set of sermons that he's preached. But he tells a story that intrigued me on the, when, when the flight started to come after the Wright brothers on the first transatlantic flight. I don't even know. Let me just speak New York ease for a second. Um, I grew up on Long Island, and so I didn't know this. Did you know that Roosevelt Field was actually an airfield where Charles Lindbergh took off to take the first flight across the Atlantic Ocean? It was the spirit of St. Louis flew 33 hours from Roosevelt Field. I used to go there as a kid when it was a mall. And then, but it was first an airstrip for, for, for Charles Lindbergh to fly the 33 hours to Paris. And they said that many others before Lindbergh did it tried to do it and fly the transatlantic flight but, but, it, but failed so many times. And Clarence McCartney tells one of the stories of a man that, that took off for the transatlantic flight and it said, he told the story that just in a few minutes when he was up in the air, just started the journey he heard something on the plane, and it was an engine, but he heard something in the cockpit, and when he looked down at his feet, he saw a rat 
We as New Yorkers understand that. That's just <laughs> pigeons and rats. That's just what that's. Welcome to New York City. He saw a rat out of, out of his reach that was nibbling on the coils of the wire. And he knew if he didn't do anything that that rat literally could nibble away and destroy not only the plane, but literally there was destruction that was coming. He wouldn't know his way. It was all connected to the, the control panel, his instrument panel, and he would surely die in the cold waters of the Atlantic if he did nothing as the rat was nibbling away. And he thought, what should I do? And he decided, I can't reach it. I can't get to it. It's behind the wall here, but I, but I see its, it, its tail. I see it's, it's, that it is what it is. And if I don't stop this thing, but how do I get to it when it's out of reach? How do I get to it when there's nothing that I can do physically to get it? And then he had an idea. And this is what he said. He realized he would take the plane to a higher altitude where rodents couldn't live and couldn't breathe. He said, if I stay here, the nibbling is going to happen. But if I take that throttle and throttle up to a higher place and a higher plane, he says, all of a sudden, that rat can't breathe. That rat can't continue to nibble away. You're no good. You're not even saved. You don't even know what gender. You don't even know. There's no way. You're going to die tomorrow. You got cancer. You don't belong in this church. You better run for your life. This is a crazy man in that pulpit. I'm just telling you my thoughts. I'm just telling you my thoughts that are hitting me right now. So you know what I did when I was down there? When I started to take the word of God and start quoting those scriptures, Colossians chapter three, verse two, set your affections on. You know what I, I was throttling up at that moment. I was going, I can't, because that rat was nibbling at me yesterday. He was going like, don't preach that. Don't say those things. Don't say those things. You live in this city. When they see you outside, they're gonna beat you up. And this, 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 I heard all of that. I heard all of that. And all I could do is throttle up at that point and say, God, I got to trust your word. I got to take the word, throttle up and go. Think on the things that are lovely, just, pure, good report. I'm going to throttle up when those thoughts begin to come. When strongholds come, when those things, arguments come, I say, God, we're going to a new atmosphere. We're going to a new place. We're going to a place we've never been to. But God, you are on the throne and we thank you, God. Stand with me. Hallelujah. You win that battle, you go up higher. You go up higher. And folks, listen, as much as I love this choir and love these songs, listen to me, listen to me. There's not a song that can get rid of a rat. You can't sing, you can't, well, no, but this is a good one. No, 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 It's this word that will, that will be forever. I told Kareem, I said with that choir, I said, you raised up singing soldiers. They sing with, with their mouth, but they fight with their sword. So if you want to sing in the choir, if you're going to that volunteer, I'm going, I want to sing. Listen, don't get up there unless you're spending time with God. Don't get up there. Don't go, I need a microphone. No, 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 no. You need to pray. That's what you need. Get a hold of God first. We don't need, we, we, folks, I'm just telling you, don't join this church. Don't, don't come here. We don't even have a membership. But don't join. Don't come here if you're not going to go, I'm adopted and enlisted. Because every row, every row, you're, you're going to be in attack mode. I'm telling you. How many know what I'm talking about? There's Sundays that everything is in, on fire. Yeah, people worshiping in your space. Their hands are like you're going like, but you know, and they're they're worshiping east and west. And you go, no, no, no. We go north and south here. I know you're not from New York because your hand is in my face and you're over here. 
and you're doing and now you can't even worship because they're they're messing up your airspace here they're messing everything up so what do you have to do you have to you have to go up higher you got to go up higher you got to go throttle up throttle up throttle up we got to go up higher i'm not worried about them i can worship even if my hands are like my hands and my and i'm i, I can worship if i'm going like okay bless them jesus bless them lord so how do I throttle up with the person that keeps messing at that? Bless those who persecute. That's the throttle up. I'm going to bless those who persecute me. I'm going to bless those who persecute. We, we throttle up when those thoughts come. America and the world forgot how to throttle up. They forgot. And we have a generation that are so confused. I'm telling you, listen, young people, I love you. We have a generation that's so confused that they've taken the basis part of us, the foundational part of your life, that you were a boy, and that you were a girl, and they put it into question. It's wrong. It's wrong. And because they don't have a throttle up, they don't know how to go up higher because they don't even believe in God. Listen to me, those that are watching from Norway, from Finland and the UK, listen to me. God made you a male. God made you a female. Don't ever be ashamed of that. And when the thoughts come, just go, I know what God made me. I know who God is. It's, I'm fighting for my children. I'm fighting for grandchildren that have yet to be born. I just don't want them to see. I just don't want them to have a grandpa and a dad that is afraid to address what the truth is. I know, I know, listen, I know. Send all the emails you want. Send them all. I won't read one. I just want you to know that. Zero. Zero. And here, here's what, let me help you online. Here it comes. Because you're already typing. I can't believe this. This man's crazy. Okay, let me tell you how many of your comments I read. Zero. I don't read any of them. Some of you going like, he's so arrogant. Mm -mm. I just throttle up. I throttle up. I'm not, I'm not staying here. I throttle up. I go up. Shouldn't you read the? Mm -mm. I know what I'm supposed to do. And I'm not going to let anybody else take me away from that. God has a plan. Okay, here it comes. Here it is. Main floor, balcony, online. I, I, want, I want to pray for those right now. That you're in a mind battle right now. The enemy is going strong. It's coming. I don't care whether you're next gen or whether you're, you're, you're on retirement. It doesn't matter. The battles are coming and you just need to be liberated right now. Get out of your seat right now and just come quickly. Just go, these battles are coming. These battles are coming. The mind, I'm not talking about gender or anything. I'm just talking about any battle that's beginning to come and affect your mind. Get out of your seat and come down. Just go, I just want God just to set me free. Whatever the battle may be, it could be, I'm gonna die. I've got cancer. I've got all this stuff that's going. God's gonna set you free today. God's gonna bring liberty today. Come on, balcony, main floor. If you're just going, pray for me today. The battles of my mind are trying to come and trying to predict my future, trying to predict what my tomorrow is going to be. But we're going to believe today that God is going to come through. Come on, as we sing this, you come. Come on, lead us, Ricardo. Hallelujah. Come on.
Hallelujah. He won't fail. God won't fail. I, I want to pray over your minds right now. I just want to pray that God come. For some of you, it's been relentless. It's been relentless. It just keeps coming. It keeps coming. Fear. There's no hope. It's not going to happen. It's relentless. It's a pounding. That, honey, you know what I'm talking about? That it's just like a pounding that seems to come. You are this. It's never going to work. This is it. You're going to be lonely the rest of your life. Father, right now, right now, for these precious people, I know the pounding that comes to the mind. And Lord, I pray this is the day that you're going to raise up a people that are going to begin to cast down every imagination into the obedience, into the captivity of Christ and take them into obedience and say, stronghold, argument, you will not predict my future, but the word of God shall predict my future. So God, I pray, crush crush those strongholds right now demolish those arguments right now those arguments that that begin to just speak death those that lord god that are afraid that they'll be lonely those that say lord god that now i have to maybe compromise so i can get this job or do this with money or all, all those things god we will today begin to bring down and bring down those arguments by exalting the word of god over every single one of those arguments i'm praying now at this altar raise up throttle up people that will say the thought came i'm throttling up the rats are trying to nibble away at who i am the rats are trying to nibble god set them in an atmosphere that they've never been before put them in the heavenly places put them in the heavenly realms when the thoughts of gender confusion, when the thoughts, oh God, of even mistaken love, when the, when the thoughts come in and the chaos starts to fill their mind, throttle up in Jesus' name. And God, I pray that you'd raise up the Word of God in their life. Let the Word take priority for them. Oh God, work a miracle right now. In Jesus' name. Look, those at this altar, look at me. If you don't have a Bible, we'll get you one. If you don't have a Bible, we'll get you one. Right over there at exit seven, we'll get you. But here's what I want to close. I, I, I want to finish. Because some of you are sitting here today and the thoughts, the thoughts that have nibbled away at you is that God doesn't love you. God doesn't care. You can never be what God wants you to be. You've done so much. And I'm here to tell you today that God loves you. Let me, let me read something to you from one of the great pastors that have gone to be with Jesus here, Tim Keller. Tim Keller said these words. He said, here's the gospel. You're more sinful than you've ever dared to believe, but you're more loved than you've ever dared to hope for. So if you're going, I'm sinful, I'm, listen to me. You're worse than that. So you're going like, well, you didn't have to tell me. But here's the good news. You're more loved than you've ever dared to hope for that God loves you so much today. So here's, so I'm gonna throttle up for you right now. Those thoughts that said, God doesn't love me anymore. God doesn't care. I'm telling you, he loves you. He wants you, he wants to adopt you today. That's called being born again. He wants to adopt you, here it comes, and enlist you today. So that, that you're gonna get, you're gonna get your baby clothes and your armor on the same day child of god birth certificate and 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 you're gonna get and you're gonna get your weapons today so if you're here today and say pastor tim i've been i never thought god would love me or want me but i want to be born again today i want god to come in and change my life i want to i've never been born again before but i want god to come in to my life and change me from the inside out i want him to come in if that's you, this is a day to be adopted and enlisted. And you're saying, would you pray for me, Pastor Tim? It'd be my honor. If you're here today and say, I want God in my life. I just didn't think he loved me. He loves you more than you've ever hoped for. And if you want God in your life, balcony, main floor, and online, raise your hand right now. Just say, I want God in my life. Hold them up high. Yes, 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 yes. Keep them up. Keep them up. Yes, yes. Wherever you're at, yes. Over there, over there, over there, over there. Keep them up because God's going to do a balcony. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, let's all pray this together before we close. Say, everybody say, Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you're the Son of God. I believe that on the cross 
You took my sin, my shame, and my guilt, and you died for it. You faced hell for me so I wouldn't have to go. You rose from the dead to give me a place in heaven, a purpose on earth, and a relationship with your Father. Today, Lord Jesus, I turn from my sin to be born again. Come on, now say this with me. God is my Father. Jesus is my Savior. The Holy Spirit is my helper. The Bible is my guide. And heaven is my home. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah. All right, here it is. Last minute, we sing one short happy song. One short happy. If you raised your hand, let those great people right there at exit seven with the smiles, they'll get you a Bible, help you on your journey. Take seven minutes online. You click the Zoom link. If you need prayer when this curtain goes down, these amazing prayer warriors in the red shirts will pray for anybody that needs prayer today. Folks, can I just ask you this? This is my insecurity. This is the rat that's going. Do you know I love you? Okay, I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you guys. It's my joy to do. I'm not angry. I'm just urgent. I'm the shepherd and a soul. Some, here, here it is. Some days I've got to be a shepherd, and some days I've got to be a German shepherd. So I was just a German shepherd today. Let's sing a song. Let's go. Come on, clap with me. Here we go. Come on. Hey. Oh, yeah. Especially those who made a decision to follow Christ. Said yes to Jesus. Sing this real loud with me. Say, oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Our God saves our God. Our God saves. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. High is shout hallelujah come on lift your hands to heaven father in the name of jesus i bless this congregation from the top of their head to the soles of their feet that what they would touch would prosper to glorify your kingdom on earth as it is in heaven god be glorified and be magnified in our lives we make a decision to follow righteousness to follow truth and we pray in the matchless name of our lord and savior jesus christ and all of god's people said we God bless you. Have an amazing week, church. We'll see you Tuesday night. God bless you. Have a phenomenal day. If you need prayer for anything, we have registered prayer partners that want to pray with you. Amen.